I would argue being sleep deprived is one of the worst things in the world. You have zero energy, you can't think, you can't feel, food doesn't taste good, color isn't enjoyable, life is miserable. And I felt like that all the time. Look, I spent 40 years on this planet and didn't know how to fall asleep. Every night I literally had to trick my brain to fall asleep or I just lay there while my thoughts go round and round. And I'm tired of it. I'm tired, but I can't fall asleep. But I've changed. I've learned and my life's focus is starting to shift to always being well rested because I gotta tell you, when I focus on sleep first in life, the quality of everything else shoots up. I'm talking I'm way happier all the time. Food tastes amazing, color looks beautiful, music sounds awesome, it's so worth it. I'm making this video because when I have trouble sleeping, I often look on YouTube for tips and every video I see out there offers pretty much the exact same advice. Don't use your phone in bed, write things down, keep your feet warm, make your room cold, avoid caffeine, blah, blah, blah. And it's not bad advice, but it doesn't really help someone like me, someone who's used to thinking at night a lot. I found a few more ways that are actually helpful if your brain won't shut off. So if you two ever have a hard time falling asleep, this video is for you. I'll put timestamps down below so if you just want the tips, you can skip ahead, but I highly recommend sticking around so you understand why I share them. Let's get into it. And just a quick FYI, I'm not a doctor. These are my opinions I've formed through living and learning. If you have a serious problem, you should talk to a qualified professional. Okay, I think there are usually two main reasons why you can't get to sleep. Number one, you can't fall asleep because your brain won't let you. And number two, you consumed something and your body chemistry is off. Let's start with talking about why your brain isn't letting you get to sleep and what to do about it. For me, this usually happens for one of three reasons. Number one, I have something in the future coming up I am worried about or thinking of. Number two, I'm dwelling on something from the past. And number three, I'm in a creative state and my brain won't stop working or coming up with ideas. It doesn't matter how comfortable or cool you are, if your mind is active, you will not be able to fall asleep. So how do you get your mind to quiet down? For me, realizing that I am not my mind was a huge turning point in my life. That voice in your head that never shuts up, you don't have to listen to it. If you let it take the driver's seat of your existence, it will put the pedal to the metal and it won't let up. That's what a mind is supposed to do. It's a tool. It's supposed to think. It's something we use when we need it, but when you are going to sleep, you don't need it. So you need to learn how to put the mind away for now until it is needed later. Now, thinking about the past, this was a common one for me, replaying those crappy memories over and over. Ugh, and your body releases cortisol when it's stressed, so if you are reliving stressful memories over and over, your body will physically be in a state of fight or flight, and it will not let you fall asleep. Trust me, I've done it thousands of nights. Worrying about the future is similar. You're trying to solve problems in your brain that don't even exist yet. Imagine trying to solve a puzzle without knowing what pieces you have. You do not have have the proper tools to deal with imagined future scenarios. So if you do this, you are creating situations for yourself you are incapable of dealing with. The key is right in the middle, right in the now, the moment in front of you. That's all we ever have and that's what we have to optimize. Understanding that and accepting all we can ever do in life is to make the moment in front of us the very best we can. That will affect your future and that will affect your sleep. That's why things like breathing and meditating and increasing your awareness through your body is the key to getting your mind from working. If you lay there and all the blood in your body is rushing to your thinking brain, you need to learn to focus that blood and energy to the rest of your body instead, to your other senses. Box breathing is great for some. I've been using Wim Hof's breathing technique and it's pretty insane. Forced inhales and natural exhales. <sighs> Basically, you breathe in more than you can exhale. I won't get into it too much in this video, but it's great for changing the state of your body from thinking to resting. Okay, to wrap up, I usually do two things when my brain is too active. The first is not to let my thinking mind take control. I use awareness and breathing to ignore my thinking mind. Like I mentioned, I like Wim Hof's breath work, which I'll share in the description. Imagine your thoughts are like balloons that you're holding onto in your hand. You just need to let them go. They can float by, but you don't need to grab them. The second thing I do is sometimes when I work on my YouTube channel too late and it's hard to stop the ideas from coming, I listen to podcasts, but not just any podcasts, spiritual talks that help you wind down and talk about what I've been focusing on in this video. It doesn't even matter if you're religious or not, we all benefit. 
I love listening to Alan Watts or my favorite guy, Michael Singer. Those kind of talks are extremely helpful to calm the mind down and focus on what's really important. I actually made a video in which I talk about a book that changed my life. I will share that at the end of the video and in the links below. If you have any questions about this, please write me a comment and I will do my best to respond. You're not alone. We're all in this together. Let's get a solution for you. Number two, you ate or drank something and your body chemistry is off. I often use alcohol and I'm telling you even one or two glasses can totally affect not just getting to sleep, but the quality of sleep we get. Plus, a lot of people take caffeine way too late in the day, which will alter your sleep hormones ability to release at the proper times also. See, when you have a bad diet or take substances that change your state of mind, you are robbing your body of the resources it needs to do its thing and fall asleep to be in its natural state, right? So if you're drinking pop or alcohol or eating crappy foods or taking drugs, when it comes time to turn off the lights, your body will be dehydrated and missing proper nourishment or you'll be wired and it's being robbed of those minerals so while you're trying to turn off your brain to fall asleep, your body is trying to repair itself so it can get to sleep and release those sleep hormones. It's trying to do its normal job without all of its normal tools available. You might get crazy shifty legs in bed or wake up in the middle of the night without being able to easily fall back to sleep or worst of all, you just can't get to sleep. This is why prevention is the best medicine. A healthy lifestyle means healthy sleeps, but easier said than done, right? If you are drinking alcohol or caffeine, stopping early really helps, but here's my secret weapon to falling asleep when I have this problem. You must hydrate, but don't just hydrate, you have to balance your electrolytes. This is huge for me. Alcohol dries you out, right? If I've been drinking, I often have a banana for some potassium, take some pink salt for sodium, and then take a magnesium pill to help get my body back on track. Coconut water is also great for hydration and potassium. Sometimes I'll mix it with lemon and salt, maybe some maple syrup or honey to sweeten it up, and it really helps. This category is where things like exercise and eating foods rich in nutrients, vitamins, and minerals fits in. Look, your body is incredible. If you aren't giving your body what it needs to survive with a proper diet, it can literally make those missing things that it needs from other macronutrients. The problem is though, that's a very inefficient way of doing it, which might result in you not being able to fall asleep or get quality sleep. With all that being said, there are gonna be nights in life where you just can't get to sleep. You look at the clock every hour thinking, well, if I fall asleep now, at least I'll get two hours sleep. Maybe none of the stuff I've talked about will help you the night before your job interview or whatever. That requires master level mindfulness, which, hey, you might be able to obtain, but sometimes you're going to need to accept your current situation. And once you learn to accept it, I found it really helps. For me, I had a night recently where I went camping in a busy campgrounds, and as someone who has a hard time sleeping, I already went into the night worried. It was a rough night. Now maybe I should have taken a sleeping pill that night, but I must warn you, sleeping pills are insanely addictive. And if you mix them with alcohol, you're gonna have a bad time. The negative thoughts that come from mixing those two things, geez, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Now, I prefer not to even take sleeping pills because then I will need to taper off them for a number of nights afterwards or I won't be able to get to sleep. Okay, let's sum it up and blast through some of the more common sleep tips that I found do work. To get to sleep, you need to get your mind out of the driver's seat and focus on the now. You do that through channeling your awareness to the rest of your body and senses and through breathing. I will leave links in the description for resources on these. Next, if you aren't taking fueling your body seriously, you're gonna have a bad time. Alcohol, crappy foods, caffeine, and other, they are robbing your body of all the resources it needs to fall asleep. Fuel your body properly and your sleep rhythm will improve. Okay, here are some other great tips. Wind down. If you're working on something that requires lots of brain power before bed, you need to chill out for a good while before you try to sleep. For me, it's at least an hour or two. Game, watch something, hang out, cook, have a bath, stretch, meditate, do something, it'll help get your mind ready for bed. Get daily movement in, motion is lotion. Get moving through the day. Whether it's cardio, weights, or stretching, do something every day, your body will thank you in your later years. Cold showers, baby. You didn't think I'd mention Wim Hof without taking cold showers, did you? Hey, you can start off hot, then just finish the last 15 seconds as cold as you can. Start with that. Do the breathing while doing this. Hot water for relaxing, cold water for negative thoughts. Try it. 
Do your best to moderate alcohol, caffeine, and other. Look, I'm not your dad, I'm not your brother, I'm not gonna shame you for your life choices, I make those choices too, but if they make your life not as enjoyable as it could be, you might have to take a hard look in the mirror because you're worth it and sleeping well is worth it. Set goals. If you find yourself thinking too much and you can't let it go, sure try writing it down or setting notes in your phone. If you get a great idea, write it down. It's fine to turn on your phone in the night, you won't die. With that being said, I do think limiting your phone and using blue light filters are smart. Look, if you're just scrolling through memes or funny things, I don't think that's a big problem before bed. It's if you're browsing the news or other topics which release those stress hormones, that's what you really need to avoid watching right before bed. Read. Look, I wanted to talk a lot more about reading, but I won't. I will say this, having a book or two you're interested in reading before bed is huge. Huge, and I think everyone should do it, even if it's just an Archie. Make sure you have a warm bulb, not cold. Cold or more of a blue tint or white tint means daylight and energy. Warm means fire and sleepy. Get a book and make sure it's the last thing you do before you close your eyes. Do your best to stick to a routine. Your circadian rhythm will affect how and when your body releases the hormones you need to get to sleep. If it's changing all the time, your body will be like, WTF? Some people often suggest if you can't fall asleep within 20 minutes to get out of bed. I don't personally agree with that, but listen to your body. If you feel like you need a snack or something, get something that will hydrate or help. I find salt helpful in those situations. Get daylight in as early as you can. Get outside first thing. Open your eyes and look around. Andrew Huberman did a great video on this. I'll share that in the description below. A quick reminder that if you do eat before bed, be very careful because trying to lie down while digesting food is no bueno. I used to always have a nighttime snack before bed and I developed GERD as a result. Your stomach does not digest food as well and the pressure to your lower esophageal sphincter at night can lead to future problems. I'd recommend eating a couple hours before bed. Stay cool. Summer nights are the hardest for me throughout the whole year. Having fans on or AC if you can will help your body get and stay to sleep. Studies have shown we sleep better when the room is colder, so cool off. Having a comfortable sleep position is important if possible. It's great if you can afford a good pillow, mattress, or blanket, but we can adapt pretty easily, so don't worry if you can't. Have tea before bed. Tea is very calming. I often have chamomile with honey and vanilla before bed. It's great. Just have a little so you don't pee in the middle of the night. Try melatonin. I do find that taking melatonin an hour or so before bed helps me sleep. Same with magnesium. But I find if I'm not drinking alcohol for longer periods, I don't need to take these as often. And don't take more melatonin than it says. I've tried and it actually makes it less effective. Put on white noise in the background. I always have a fan on and I love ocean sounds. Be clean. I find when I'm dirty or grimy, I don't enjoy being in bed as much. A nice warm or cold shower always helps get your body ready. Don't forget to brush and floss your teeth. Breathe. Where does the breath come from? Where does it go? Be amazed with the breath and enjoy it. Focus on it. Hypnotize yourself with it. Big breath in. Then exhale. And sink into bed each more with every breath. Some people like to relax each muscle one by one from head to toe. Try relaxing one muscle per every breath. Lastly, be excited to sleep. Sleep is insane. I don't even understand it. Where do we go? What happens? Why do we need it? It's crazy. And start looking forward to mornings. Your morning coffee or tea, the peaceful quiet. Mornings are rad, I swear. Sleeping is a big part of life. Maybe one of the most important things and it's worth taking seriously. If you focus on what I talked about in this video, I promise you'll be sleeping like a champ in no time. And you know what? Maybe once in a while you have a bad night and that's okay. It might be a hard day, but it'll pass. So having a healthy lifestyle and giving your body all the tools it needs to wind down, practicing acceptance of the now, letting go of thoughts by focusing on the breath using awareness, and reading or listening to mindfulness podcasts were the key for me to get to sleep every night. And by practicing these things, it's made me be able to fall asleep much faster and allowed me to get better sleep as well. Life is good. I just want to enjoy my life as much as possible and I want that for you too. Hopefully something in this video resonated with you and will help you get the rest you need to operate in a happy and healthy way. 
If you have any good sleep tips, please leave them down in the comments below. You never know who you're gonna help. If you wanna learn more about mindfulness, which I highly recommend, watch the video where I talk about the book that changed my life. You can see that here. Otherwise, maybe check out the video where I quit alcohol for 30 days here. I had never tried that before and the results really surprised me. As always, thank you for watching. I really appreciate the subs, the likes, and the comments. See you next time on The Sad Life. <laughs> <laughs>